Hello everyone and welcome to the John Sargent Singer Master Studies, more like quick studies of his paintings, where I'll be making a 10 uh, minute quick videos of um, me painting and explaining this uh, artist's um, artwork, what he does and trying to analyze whatever he's doing so you can apply it in your work not necessarily stealing but you know just uh, seeing what this person been doing back in his time if you don't know who John Sargent Singer is he was uh, an American uh, artist considering the, considered the leading portrait painter of his generation for his evocations of uh, Edwardian era luxury he created roughly 900 oil paintings and more than 2,000 watercolors, as well as countless sketches and charcoal drawings. He was born on January 12, 1856, Florence, Italy, and died in April 14, 1925, in London, United Kingdom. So here we're studying his piece of uh, Frederick Slade Roberts. We're just gonna spend like 10 minutes on this, and. Um, this is an exercise for you. You can grab one of your favorite old master painting and just do a quick 10 minute color uh, uh, study of it. And trust me, you will learn a lot from it. That's what I have been doing for the past, uh, for the past year at least. I've been studying a bunch of artists uh, work and I've learned a lot and I implemented what I've learned in my own artwork. So what I'm doing, I'm just color picking from this painting and I will not go into a lot of details. I will just quickly block in the light scheme of uh, the environment I see. So since this is a, like a portrait, but you know, full figure portrait, I'm just going to quickly block in here the background just like that, nice and easy. You know, you if you want to do a whole master study of it by every detail, well, be my guest and do it. But uh, for, for this purpose of this exercise, uh, you just spend 10 minutes. 10 minutes and get the colors. It's all about the colors and the lights in this one. So, here if you see, I'm just uh, using a... Uh, a default um, Photoshop chalk brush. Quickly blocking in, as we don't have much time. Remember, ten minutes. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the figure. Let's try. Yeah, put it here. So the light's coming from uh, the right side, or if you flip it from the left side, doesn't matter. It comes from uh, one side. As you can see, it's darker on the other. Now, I don't know what they've been doing back then. What kind of light is that? It might be even a, a light from the day. And he's sitting somewhere and there's a window. It's like he's standing. Just quickly putting features here. And the mustache. eyes here they don't have to be super accurate because we're not going for accuracy by the way if you cannot do it in 10 minutes just do it in less it doesn't matter if you can't do it exactly in 10 that's okay do it in 20 contrast to the background as well he pops out as pretty much all oh, this of course is of um, as you can see it's not a typical person 
person you see on the street <laughs> is uh, somebody. But yeah. Has a lot of um, details. Super lot of details. So what you need to do is you need to simplify so you don't get caught up in it. And you're just doing that exercise. Getting the colors in, the shadows. You see, I keep color picking so I save time. Here we have to go to more kind of this color, more um, gold thing. There we go. Sometimes it might be not so easy to do do it quickly but you know the more complicated it is it gets the better because uh, you get to simplify shapes and you get to do it in your work so you you paint a lot of things you simplify them and then you tackle them one by one as you render out the piece and you don't get confused because if you tackle them all at the same time you might get all frustrated because not a lot of information to put there that's why you need to carefully plan what you're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna put a highlight here because you see at this point it's been lit here, so now John Sargent Singer is one of my favorite impressionist artists. I like his work of a plain air where he paints trees and uh, landscapes with watercolor. We're gonna do one of that in the next in the next part. This video is gonna be 30 minutes long, so it's gonna be three paintings. I'll try to make each week somebody else's uh, somebody else our artists uh, old master so we can you know learn as much as we as we can so I suggest as as you watching this or after you watch it just uh, pick an artist and do it and do as much as you can whatever you are starting your career as an artist or is uh, you're doing for a hobby you just want simply to improve or you're a veteran already established a uh, painter you probably have done that already a lot <laughs> okay putting that golden color so not much time left we have to wrap it up slowly it's all for the exercise you see and I, I haven't even done all of the things that should be present in this illustration just quickly suggesting different parts Thing. 
Okay, so... I guess we're about to wrap it up. So, 10 minutes again. And here we are working on a building that's in uh, Venice called Scola Grande di San, Co San Rocco. And this is a watercolor painting from uh, like a plein air study from uh, John Sorge Singer. I'm gonna quickly lock in the colors. So we got 10 minutes. I like the variations here of the orange that he's using. Just gonna quickly put it here. As you can see, I'm color picking. So it doesn't slow me down. The choosing of the colors. Darker window here. So if you've never been to Venice, you should visit it. That city is just amazing. It's all standing on piles and piles of tree logs. It's been built on top of on top of uh, wood. Like um, they've taken thousands of uh, trees and they just like build it on top. Put uh, concrete, mud, and stuff, and build this all these amazing structures. Okay, gonna paint some of that background, that highlight that's popping out in the distance, that bridge. So I don't remember this exact spot because I've been to Venice, but um. I know that John Sargent Singer is using different colors from what you see in real life because uh, he wants to make an impression of that, of what he's seeing. It's not necessarily has to be as accurate as it is. So in your own work, if you want to go outside, and I advise you to do so, buy yourself a set of um, pocket watercolors, two brushes, small sketchbook for watercolor somewhere to put your water in and just go outside and paint you will learn so much pick any subject you like you know at first you won't be you will, you'll be making crap stuff and that's for sure unless you're uh, someone like John Sargent but uh, gradually you will improve the more time you put in it and the more you understand what you're doing, the better you will get. I assure you. And by doing these exercises, learning from the old masters, you will, uh, you will improve a lot. I can tell you that. Whether you're doing comic books or uh, illustration or concept art for video games, this all will help you. So we're gonna paint some more of the reflections because we have water here, greenish, watercolorish water. Mm. 
Yep, just like that. And some of that white here and here. Sometimes when doing these, you might get a little frustrated because you have a lot of information to do and so... And so less, you know, you don't have much time. So little time you have to do all of this, but uh, what you have to do is simplify. And just make suggestions, you know, one brush stroke. Like that, just one brush stroke, move to the next. One here, here, and you know, just move to the next. It's there. It's not perfect, but it's there. Okay, I'm going to paint the windows. have three minutes left. Oh boy. We haven't even painted the bottom of it. Like the water itself, which is greenish. I don't know why, why it's greenish. Maybe because there's wood in it and all this structures and it's um, getting nice. But it's very colorful. Okay, gondola's time. Trying to get that... that shape correctly. turning of it. Okay, some blue here. What's the... Um, what's the beauty of the watercolor is that you get to mix up all of the colors to make very cool tints. Variations of different colors. Which you mix up and you make something entirely new. huge window in the middle. Look how cool and amazing buildings they've been building back then. They're still standing. Okay. Yeah, this window has a lot of detail and I'm I almost got caught there painting it. We don't need to. We don't need to do that. We need to get the whole thing. Get the whole thing in 10 minutes with not so much detail. Okay. Stairs time. Less than a minute left. So I suggest that you pick your favorite artist and do what I do. Spend 10 minutes, half an hour, as much time as you have in your disposal and learn from the old masters. The knowledge is out there and it's out there for you to find it and use it in your own artwork. Whether you're painting spaceships, uh, cute girls or battle scenes or just simply like to paint plain air or models 
this all will be helpful for you. Okay, time's up. So this is what I've managed in 10 minutes. Okay, so here is the third one. And this one is called A Street in Venice. So it's in Venice. And what I like about this uh, one is that it has a lot of muted colors. The previous one was very colorful, a lot of red, blue, green. This one has more muted earthly colors. It's like a dark and back alley of, of Venice. So you see two figures in the middle. The mood is so, I don't know, gives out s s something like a post-apocalyptic setting. Now that's from at least from the three that I've uh, studies I've done in this half an hour video. This one's my favorite. I tend to like more the dark, the darker uh, paintings of an artist. Okay, I'm getting caught up in details. Save me from the details. Quickly. Those colors, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna make this wall. Try to get a sense of depth. That street, like here. shadow here of the door frame just just captures your eye to look what could be there what is she talking with him about how the hell John Sergio Singer could manage to make them stay for so long so two figures are standing As you can see in the the um, the middle of the middle of, uh, figure is like um, is exactly in the center of the image and tries to capture your eye so you look in between the two buildings that's standing. Light pops in only in the very background, so you get that muted feeling of the street. Okay, I'm almost done with the street. Now I have to start the figures. Got like six minutes left. Like those details of the stones. Okay. Black coat. of it this must must be an oil painting comparing to the previous one that we, we've done that was a watercolor very colorful some of those features on his face though they are not so important now if you notice the lady's dress that's hidden underneath uh, her uh, what do you call it hood is almost the same color as is the the wall on the right though a bit brighter in some some areas
left. Now she looks a bit creepy here <laughs> because uh, I'm not taking my time to work on the face. So we're just trying to soften the features a little bit. The highlights on her hands. see the basic shapes are there though it's very loose we have the correct color scheme study So that's it, 10 minutes up and we've completed this one as well. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I will see you in the next week's Master Study, which I'm not sure who I'm going to pick, but uh, it'll be someone that's great and will offer you a lot of information. Bye, until the next one. <laughs>